All right, guys, this is Dalen again with MA Performance. Me and Nate just got back from Japan. We traveled over there to visit one of our dealers, HKS. I don't really think that name needs any sort of introduction at all. It's one of the most legendary tuning brands out of Japan. We went over there to visit their facilities to kind of look at how they operate and just kind of see what's new, what's happening, what's coming up with them. It just so happened that we got to go to Tokyo Auto Salon. All the big tuning shops out of Japan, all of the, actually a lot of the big manufacturers, so everybody is going to be there. Uh, keep in mind that we were only there for two and a half days. I think we had 50 hours of travel time and 60 hours of time actually in Japan. We are going to show you all of that right now and hopefully you enjoy it and it's everything you could have ever hoped for and it makes you want to go visit. When booking flights, we kind of booked this last minute so like we didn't exactly get the cream of the crop when it came to flights. We flew out of Minneapolis at like 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but I'm not good at waking up early. So I had like 47 alarms set. This was gonna happen. So next leg is a 14 hour flight, like 13 and a half, 14 hour flight from Chicago O'Hare all the way into Narita Tokyo Airport. So we landed. I had kind of looked at, like I knew what trains we needed to make it to and I like thought I had a plan about where we needed to go. And then all that kind of like immediately went out the window and I realized that like don't speak any Japanese and I don't know how to get around the airport. And this is the uh, Narita Express. So this is from the airport to Shingawa Station. Get on that train, totally effortless. Uh, all of the like stations were announced in English so like once again, I could figure it out. I wasn't like lost in, lost in the water or lost in the sauce, as the kids say. Made it through, got onto our next train, which was a bullet train, which I was super excited for because like, I don't know, it's a train, it goes really fast. I like really fast stuff. Uh, passed through a lot of cool little towns as we were kind of headed down. I think a two and a half hour travel time from the airport. HCAS met us there, they, did, they, they guided us, they were our Sherpas, it was awesome. Like we didn't have to be confused anymore. They just, they took us, embraced us and walked us to our hotel. A quick little tour of the room. Let's see, what does it look like out there? All right, so next morning we get up. Body clock just wasn't fully reset. So I woke up five, we had some breakfast that morning. Got up, just walked around town a little bit, kind of just stretched my legs and just look around, because everything's neat. I cannot remember the town name, I'm really bad at this, but we're basically driving directly towards Mount Fuji. Just cool mountain roads to kind of drive through, so we're getting closer and closer, and finally we make a left turn, there's like a small sign that says HKS. First off, the complex is just gigantic like I guess I kind of knew this already but like I think they have like six to eight buildings there all for their manufacturing and like warehousing side of it so now we're starting the tour uh, we get brought into a couple of the newer buildings and like just casually turn the corner and here is their R34 demo car like I'm not one to normally drool over cars immediately but this car has a lot of importance for HKS I mean this is like the HKS VCAM car. This has all of their number one R34 parts. And like, this is a car that we don't get in the US. This is like one of the most hyped cars in the world. And it's just like casually parked in a corner. Next stop is the HKS Museum, which is, I don't even know if museum is the right word, but like it is a dedicated section of a floor in the top of one of their buildings filled with historic engines, cars, motorcycles, and an entire wall of just all the stuff about HKS. You see these cars, they have, uh, I think it was a Formula 3 car, which HKS did a lot of engine development on these chassis back in the day. Like you can tell that these cars weren't like prettied up to be put somewhere. Like somebody drove these, they got parked and they got moved to this museum. You look across your way and you have a GT500 Mercedes that HKS developed in the late 90s. In an era in which like GT500, JGTC, 
GT300, like all of these series were dominated by the top three of the major manufacturers, you know, Toyota, Nissan, Mitsubishi and the likes. You have a Mercedes, like a big Mercedes. Behind all of that are just engines. So you have anything from a, uh, it was a formula, not formula, but like a formula 4G63. So like uh, Rally Art developed stuff that worked with HKS that you saw in a lot of the formula cars with these big sweeping intake manifolds that were super neat and that were obviously designed to work very well. The next step is HKS's, uh, is it the 300E? The, I think I grabbed some video. There's a black formula car right in that same area that was actually the Formula One test bed for this engine. It's a V12 NA, kind of the, the rich, rich history that is in that small area and that gave you kind of a feeling of how diverse HKS has been and still still are. Uh, they have a rich power sports history from airplanes to motorcycles to cars to the motorsport side of Formula One to the time attack side with the Atezza to the streetcar side with everything else. People aren't going to think about drag racing when they think about HKS, but that Supra is just awesome. Seeing everything at HKS and, and seeing what they did and how they do it and how they make their decisions and how they work through stuff, it was just a... Uh, to relate it back to how we operate, it was, I mean, it was really interesting. Like there's some things that for us as a manufacturer, we talk about growth, growth, growth. How can we, how can we do the next best thing? How can we add this? And I would say it's, it's fairly eye-opening to watch HKS and how they've made their decisions and how they've done everything. Um, a lot of stuff mirrors how we've been operating and that's really cool to see that a lot of stuff is the same stuff that us as a small company that in to relative to how long they've been around, we're, we're babies. It was a big value add, like we're already there, we're already get, seeing everything, and to kind of affirm some choices that we've made as a business, we're just really nice. So we get back in the vans, we're driving north, and we just take an off ramp, and none of us really know what's happening. And we pull into like an alley, and you look out, and it's just like our chassis is everywhere. We got like R34s covered in dust that like here would be someone's baby that would like be tucked into a corner. And then as we park, we're looking around and like there's a couple things that they let us uh, take pictures and video of. I mean, there's literally just like piles of R32s. It's the Midori Service Center. It's one of HKS's like larger dealers in Japan and like service centers of installing the products. Just to see how they operate, the skill at which they have, and the style at how they build the car. It was very focused on preserving what the GTR was to them. So you're not gonna see huge million horsepower cars. You're not gonna see all the wild everything, in fact. Most of the cars there were stock engine with like basic turbos, basic tune-up. Every single thing on that car was designed and installed to make it drive like they felt a GTR should. With that, it was, I think we're like noon, one o'clock-ish at this point, and we got back on the road. We then stopped at one of the larger Super Auto Box which I don't think I got a whole lot of footage because we were kind of just like running. I mean, like I keep saying that, but like we were on a very tight schedule. So we're like, we have 20 minutes here, a half hour here, 15 minutes here, 12 minutes here. And we're like moving through all this stuff. We are headed to our hotel in Chiba. So the first night we stayed down near HKS at Mount Fuji. And now we're gonna go up north Chiba. That's where our hotel is gonna be for the next well, next two nights. So we check in. We are now going to go out to dinner with HKS Japan and HKS USA, and kind of everyone that we have with us to kind of just recap the day. And it was time to sleep because tomorrow we get to go to the Tokyo Auto Salon. We get to go to this place that we've all dreamed of. And now we're gonna walk to Tokyo Auto Salon. No, we walked to some trains. Everything's trains, I love the trains. We take it to basically the main convention center. So we're walking across a bridge across kind of one of like the main downtown streets and this building in front of us is just like incredible. The building just looked cool so you knew that this was gonna be awesome. We get inside and we're just like walking through the hallway and like the first car we see is like the HKS like Group A R32 just like 
hanging out. We make it to the escalator and like we walk in and we like look out and like we stand on the escalator and we like look to our left and it's just a Tokyo Auto Salon. As a Japanese car enthusiast, th that's been the mecca. Auto Salon was it. Like this is the place that I have to go at least one point in my life. So we hit the ground and like, I'm ready to go. Like I'm like darting this way, darting that way. And they're like, they had to like reel me in for a second. And we went directly to the HKS booth. So now we have the 2J A90 Supra. We have their like street style uh, six cylinder Supra. And then we have their street style with the wide body. This booth is incredible. Like I've, I've done a lot of automotive trade shows in my life. I've seen a lot of stuff. Uh, perfect carpet laid out. Uh, the parts were all in very nice orderly areas and every single person that worked there was in like a suit and tie. So obviously we're there with HKS. So we wanna see, we wanna learn what's new, what products are coming up. So they show us a bunch of the prototype like A90 Super parts. Uh, they had some installed, some out of the car and we're get to like look at them, hold them and kind of see what, what's coming up. What should we expect? What can we help get you soon? Now we shift them over, they tell us a four cylinder car. The fact that we're most likely not gonna get it in the US is so sad to me. So now I have one in front of me, like I need to stare at this. And now they say, all right guys, free reign, go wherever you want. I don't know where I wanna go. I don't even, like I hardly even know where I am right now. So the other building, uh, we wander over there, we go over a couple bridges. So the first building is like the major companies. Other building is a lot of the tuning shops or the smaller companies. At the same time, there's an auction going on in the center hall. So we sit down, we're in like the top of the stands and like the lights shut off and we're like, yes, it's happening. No, it was like a pop music concert with like sick dancing of like light suits. We left, we went back to going through cars and then we got word that the auction was actually starting. We went back, watched the HKS R33 sell for like 110,000 US dollar. We saw a few more cool cars sell, some like uh, 935 Porsches, like $1.5 million, like just. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, can I, do I have vending machine money or like where am I at right now? Our ending point was once again HKS. So we literally made it like through everything and it like closes at seven at like 6.58 or like, crawling back into the HKS booth. I keep seeing pictures like online of like, I, I walked right there and I don't remember seeing this. Like I remember that, but I don't remember this. So it's like just a testament to how much cool stuff was there. No matter if you were facing right or left, you saw something cool and you missed something cool. A couple, like a lot of the group is there for like a week a week and a half, some even longer. And like me and Nate are there for two and a half days. So like, I don't wanna go to bed. Like I do, so I like tried to force myself. So I went up, I like laid down. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna be a good boy. And like 10 minutes in, I was like, nah, I can't. I grabbed my camera, grabbed my fist full of change and put it in my pocket and I, I'm gonna go find some cool vending machines because they're everywhere and everything's awesome. I'm just gonna wander around. So of course, initially I'm like, I wonder if I'm gonna find some cool cars. And like off in the distance, I just hear this like, I hear someone driving around really fast in what sounds like a cool car. So I'm like, oh, all right, figured out the direction I'm gonna start walking. It's just a dude, just like a young kid, like probably younger than me, just parks on the side of the road, gets out and like walks in a restaurant. I think like overall I walked around for like two or three hours, just like, every nook and cranny that I can find. Like I'm following like the little river that goes through town and I'm like watching trains and like, finally I'm like, okay, I think I'm far enough away that like I have to find my way back. It's like three in the morning, I think. And like we fly out the next day. So I'm like, okay, I should probably get some sleep. Wake up and kind of all of us are packed up, checked out. We had to like check out by like 10 or 11 and our flight wasn't till five o'clock that night. and we finally got on our final train ride in Japan. It's a super cool train ride, like through the mountainside, like through the kind of like farmland areas. And like, once again, like it was the perfect picturesque way to leave Japan. 
got to the airport, now that we were masters of the airport and knew everything and how to get around, it was much easier. Got checked in. Our first flight was going to be from Narita, the same airport, into Vegas. Kind of reminisce on the fact that like, I'm so thankful that as, a, as an individual, the shop was, you know, MA Performance was willing to let me go on this trip, giving me the tools to be able to do it and to make it happen. And then HKS USA, of course, making it happen and putting all that effort in. I kind of just got to sit down and reflect at like how lucky we are to have all that. I don't, that, 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 was, that was the trip. We went through so many things and got to share so much stuff with you guys. Um, I, you know, if you've made it this far, thank you. Like, thank you for caring. And if you want them to send us back next year to go visit all of the stuff, maybe take some more time, maybe get, a little bit more out of it. Maybe visit some more shops, visit some stuff that we work with. Um, obviously, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Sharing it with you guys is such an important part of this entire process that uh, if you guys like that, tell us.